Next slide. As starlight passes through our atmosphere, the starlight gets refracted or bent every which way randomly and very quickly, as in just fractions of a second. Without a telescope, we see the stars twinkle. Under high magnification, you'd see that a single star's light would be broken up into multiple images that would dance around randomly in a fraction of a second. If your exposure time for your camera was a second or longer, you'd get a large, fuzzy blob the size of the entire distribution of dancing images. Click the Mars video link and you'll see a short video of Mars taken under conditions of good seeing. The word seeing used here means a measure of the turbulence in the air. Steadier air, less turbulence, means better seeing. Notice how Mars shimmers and comes in and out of focus. The video is not sped up. The view from the Hubble Space Telescope, which is above the distorting atmosphere, is shown on the right. Go back to the third slide and click the real-time high mag data movie link. This shows the effect of the atmosphere when observing a double star under very high magnification. Good luck in spotting the double star image in all that mess. If you freeze the video, you'll see many, many multiple images of the double star across the fuzzy blob called the seeing disk. The video is a real-time recording of what you'd see. It is not sped up. The atmosphere prevents a telescope from achieving its true resolving power, so a large telescope would have the same resolving power as a much smaller telescope. So telescopes are built on tall mountains to get above as much of the atmosphere as possible, so the seeing is better. There's less distortion with calmer air. The telescopes on tall mountains are not closer to the stars because the few miles of elevation compared to sea level is totally insignificant compared to the trillions and trillions of miles to the stars. Observatories that are above 9,000 feet, 2,700 meters, in elevation are also above most of the water vapor that blocks much of the infrared light from space. Mauna Kea in Hawaii is one of the best places for doing optical and infrared astronomy from the ground because it is at almost 14,000 feet, 4270 meters elevation, and it is sticking up in the middle of the vast Pacific Ocean, so the air is usually very calm up there. Telescopes in space are above all of the distortion of the atmosphere, so the telescopes can achieve their true diffraction-limited resolving power, and you can view all of the wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum from gamma rays to radio. Now astronomers are using a technique called adaptive optics to compensate for the atmospheric turbulence and remove much of the seeing effects. This enables ground-based telescopes to achieve a resolving power much closer to their true diffraction limited resolving power. Adaptive optics uses a deformable mirror that is adjusted thousands of times a second to counteract the atmosphere and it is the only way we'd be able to justify building the extremely large telescopes of today and tomorrow. Next slide. With radio telescopes, we use computers to make an image that follows the shape and intensity of the radio emission. False colors indicate the intensity of radio emission at different locations. Here's an image of Jupiter in the radio and visible bands. In the radio, you can see Jupiter's super powerful and very deadly radiation belts. The next picture on the left is a radio galaxy with jets of charged particles glowing in the radio band that shoot out from a galaxy's core in which a supermassive black hole resides. The last set of images is a radio image tuned to the emission from cool hydrogen atoms in a galaxy. Using the Doppler effect, we can map the internal motion of the galaxy.